Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm an application specialist for Tackler Structures. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing basic customization of Tackler Structures. More specifically, we're going to be talking about some areas where you, the user, can tailor the interface to better suit your workflow and needs. So let's go ahead and jump right in. There's a lot of places that we can go ahead and start tweaking things, but I think one that we want to talk about is the contextual toolbar. Now, if you're familiar with the contextual toolbar, this is kind of what it looks like, especially if you're just looking at a view, and you can access it but through file and then the settings menu, there's a checkbox, or you can hit control K. This guy kind of follows you around uh, your cursor on screen unless you pin him. But you can actually do a little bit more. Um, as you know, when you select an object, the contextual toolbar's fields change to reflect information that is pertinent to that. Uh, object and we can actually customize those fields so for example you know with a concrete item you may see the profile the class and maybe the positioning as well as a few other fields but we can tailor that to uh, any 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 field that uh, we see fit uh, and you can do that by hitting the button in the lower right hand corner that is the menu button and this brings up a dialog that allows us to go ahead and start to creating unique profiles and then you can use the drop down at the top left of the dialog to select the different objects whether it's the model view or concrete panels or concrete wall and then go ahead and check which fields you'd like to see um, this allows you quick access to things that you may find in the properties pane or even you know use DAs whether they're default or custom ones that you make um, that you're using consistently through your workflow now in relation to that uh, I think we ought to talk about the properties pane and so there are some similar benefits to modifying the properties pane as there is the contextual toolbar, but I think you get a little more bang for your buck. I think doing both together is probably optimal. And um, you can tailor what is shown in the properties pane per object type, and you can do edit more than one object at a time uh, to show the information that's relevant to you. The cool thing about this though is that this customization that you do for either the contextual toolbar or the properties pane can be stored in a firm or project folder. I think though, let's go ahead um, and take a peek now and, and, and dump, jump in and actually do a little bit of customization or see how this actually works. We have a really simple model here. I've got two wall panels, one that's cast in place and then one that's masonry. Now, if we select the cast in place and look at the properties pane, we can see that generally things are organized as we expect them to be. General properties, the position and offsets, cast units, that sort of thing. And you would know if you've used any kind of concrete item before that this is the default as well for those kinds of items that we typically place in masonry walls. Um, one thing we'll point out is that for a couple of years now we've had some localized user-defined attributes right into the properties pane and it's been a nice addition. These user-defined attributes are typically the ones that if you go to the dialog and then the parameters page which is the one that uh, pops up you're gonna see a correlation those things user fields comments preliminary marks all those things what this does is it just gives us quick access to those without having to deal with the dialog box all we've done is uh, use the feature to be able to customize the properties pane and you can go to the properties pane settings hit customize and it's gonna bring up a dialog box now on the left hand side it's going to have you select the item on which you want to apply these changes you're about to make right you can select more than one at a time so you can do all of your concrete elements at once or if you do want to be specific say just for concrete item you can look at it but even doing so when I select that you can see some of the things have changed I have different categories here we'll come back to that in just a second if we look back at our panel we have the correlation let's collapse all these these are our headers and if we expand that again these are the properties they're listed underneath so we can see a direct correlation we have the ability to modify these elements we can re remove or delete or rename these so you can keep a property but give it a unique name something that's uh, more identifiable or applicable for the way you're using it um, we can also then add new elements to the properties pane whether it's a property which is any kind of attribute that we can think of an empty group which could be uh, another header that's collapsible Special, we can do more buttons to open up different things like that, and that's what you can see right here. And then we can also do some copied properties. Uh, to, to kind of briefly show, we could do a new header that says uh, Basecamp, right? And once we type that out, we can then drag and drop this in here. It's always easier if you have all this collapsed, but notice it's highlighting blue where I'm kind of hovering. If I just drop in the empty space without a highlight, it's, 
it's going to go nowhere. So make sure that you're dropping it in a place that you want. We'll just do this above localized UDAs. And it's expanded for us, and we can control that here and the default visibility if it's turned on and off for that particular item. Uh, but then we can come back up and add different types of properties. So let's say there is some submittal information we'd like to attach to our objects. We can then search for that. Some of this is already found on the shop site status uh, tab of the UDAs, and but now we can localize them directly here. So this highlights a great way to customize Tecla for specific object types that lend itself to the workflow you're already doing, saving yourself a little bit of time to having quick access to these. So once we've done that, we just need to hit save and then close the dialog box. This pops up saying, we've changed the template. Do you want to reload? We do. We hit yes. Uh, and now we can see those changes made there. If we go ahead and just start collapsing some of these, we'll be able to kind of get a better idea of that. Um, here we are, Basecamp and our submittal information. Even has you know the calendar pop out and all that so good stuff. If we take this a step further, we can look at uh, the elements of, of, say, for masonry. And I think this is a great use case of where you can really customize the properties pane, but certainly not the only one. For the masonry tool, for those who are unfamiliar, not only do we dictate typical item or shape the information, the shape, the material, what name, its class, so on, prefix, and that stuff, but we also do pay attention to providing a finish. The tool can give us a, a field for color as well as a design name to ha and design group mark to help for filtering. And it also tags block for us, whether we're cutting those blocks or we're inserting reinforcement into those blocks. And we do have some reinforcement in this wall here. If we turn those transparent, we can see horizontal and vertical reinforcement. Um, so anytime that the tool automatically creates that, it tags those specific blocks knowing you know, that it's going to need to be grouted. And this happens uh, on end conditions in the bond beams, uh, whether they're the main bond or the M, and you, can, and, and you can see those kind of populate there. Now, if we choose to correlate this, typically uh, your item, concrete item, is going to show the same properties that your concrete wall panel is. But I've gone ahead and kind of customized that uh, pretty quickly, and I can select just one block here, and we're going to see the difference. We do see the general information, uh, but now I've got a masonry subheader. I've moved finish down there. I've grouped uh, the design name, color, uh, design group mark, whether it's reinforced, if it's cut. And notice as I'm hovering too, I'm getting the UDA name showing up. So I have a quick visual reference. That's always nice. And then there are other things under, underneath masonry, such as labor tracking fields and lay rates. Now I can populate this stuff information in my defaults, or I can use the organizer to write this information on mass to all my bricks at once and then view it here in the properties pane what we're trying to really accomplish is uh is visibility on these things that are important to our workflow and you have the power to go ahead and tailor this exactly the way you need it now let's all talk about just a couple other things we'll touch on them just some some quick points here uh for other quality of light customization keyboard shortcuts are a really obvious one this has been around for quite some time and you can change and adjust the key bindings so that they make sense to you we can also go ahead and customize our tool ribbons if there are tools that are just in the way and they're too cluttered and we're never using them you can hide them uh, but you can also add different partitions and and, and areas uh to the ribbons and then bring in additional tools or organize existing tools already on other ribbons in one place so that you don't have to click around so much. One common thing that you can do here too is bring in um, custom components to the ribbon so you don't have to search the applications and component side pane to find those things. The other one that I'll point out, and I did a video on this not too long ago, but um, you can now with the uh, version 2021 kind of customize your shape catalog. So for those of you doing masonry or using formwork or using a lot of like hardware and things like that, you can really kind of customize those those shapes into categories and subcategories. Everything I've mentioned here too, again, can be placed in your firm folder. So you can do this once, set it up, and then have it ready for yourself and anyone else on your team. So you get a consistent experience. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video or other topics, please visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.